Hello and welcome to this time lapse. I did this for an exhibition that I have on um, coming up in a month or so. It's an equine exhibition, so I'm quite excited. I got three pieces out. And um, I just absolutely love this reference photograph. It's from Dottie Weber, which I bought from Wildlife Reference Photos. Um, so starting on the pastel matte paper here, I'm using the Sienna color. The size of this sheet is about 40 centimeters by 55 centimeters. So not a massive painting, but not a little one. Like what I usually do. I usually do paint smaller just because it's cheaper to frame. Anyway, so, so I put the background in there, the sky where I use a Unison BV-8 and BV-9 and a little bit of BV-10. Uh, that is that blue that you can see that I've just put on in her face. It's a beautiful blue-violet and I really wanted to play with those colors, blue, violets and yellows, because they usually look so beautiful in a painting together, being um, opposites on the color wheel. You know, yellows work really well with purples. So starting off with her face, I um, used a lot of pastel pencils for her face. Um, you can see I'm not painting very big. It's, it's quite small, even though, you know, 55 centimeters is quite large. You're getting nearly a whole horse in there. So her face is going to be quite small. And I found the pastel pencils worked really, really well. So just layering in now, the sun is hitting right there on her forehead and right down her nose so I didn't bother putting other colors under there I went straight in with the white then lots of layering underneath with grays and like I said I use some BV10 for her shadow parts just it, it, it just adds a beautiful depth to the white or I think technically white horses are called gray horses aren't they I should ask my daughter, she, she horse rides and she, she knows quite a lot about them. I just think they're pretty. I don't really study horses. But anyway, that's uh, by the by. But yes, and also you can see a little bit of like a yellow green just on her cheek there. And a little bit um, by the, uh, I want to say nosy part, above from her nose, the long nosy part. I don't know what you call that part of a horse. But it was important to add some of because um, some of those yellows because the reflection from the flowers is going to be reflecting back into a white coat. So um, I used a lot of colors in here. I did use white, like I said, on the brightest part there, on the bridge of her nose. But I also used a lot of warm grays, a lot of um, purples, blue violets, some yellow greens, some gray greens. Um, some very dark browns just to build up her fur. I absolutely love creating white. It's one of my favorite things um, to paint. And also, I, the reason I also chose this photo reference is I love the stark um, contrasts that you get. Yes, I know it's a photograph and if I was in real life, I'd probably see a lot more color and all of that stuff. Yes, I know I get that. But I actually really enjoy that high contrast. Um, I think it's fun. And for now, that's what I like to paint. So there again, I'm going in with straight white because that sun is really hitting on her shoulder. So I just went in with straight white um, where it meets the shadow parts. You can see me laying down like yellow ochre colors. Then I've got some blue greens, um, slightly turquoisey, muted turquoisey greens. Um, so, yeah, adding a whole bunch of um, color into a white fur. So usually I'd work on the background first, um, but I actually left the field of, of flowers um, more towards the end. So I'm getting the majority of the horse in first because she is amongst this field. And I just felt it would be easy if I get her in first and then I could work on the background. So doing quite a lot um, of work like her face in, in this part is almost done so is her neck because usually I um, get a layer of pastel on everywhere before I finish an area but as I said I did quite a lot of work on the horse before I moved anywhere else so starting here with the field you can see I'm putting in the swampy goldy green color it's a yellow green earth 10 from unison now the yellow green earths in unison are amazing they are such good, well, yellow greens. Um, they just work a treat. 
um, and they've been vital in capturing yellow, I'll always pull them out. As soon as I'm painting yellow flowers, out comes the yellow green earth. They just, I can't really describe, but the colors are just spot on for creating um, depth. You know, if I just go in with yellow and green, it's going to look as in, you know, middle of the road yellow, middle of the road green. It's just going to look so lifeless. So I've actually got a lot of different yellows and greens in here. I've got spring greens, and like I said, dirty greens, um, a green umber sort of colors. And then we've got bright yellow. A lot of the yellow I used for here are also unison. I also really enjoy their yellows. They've got a beautiful yellow color range. Because um, usually unison, that's where I go to if I want all these in-between neutral sort of colors. But their yellows actually pack a punch. They're lovely. So I use a lot of yellow and I also used, I've just bought a set of Giraud, the, um, oh, I forgot his name. It's the floral set, Daniel Keys. There we go. I think his work is absolutely stunning. He's an oil painter, but he also does some pastel work. I'll definitely go check him out if you haven't on YouTube or wherever you can find him. I don't think he has a channel actually on YouTube. But if you just Instagram some of his work, I mean, it's just outstanding work. Anyway, why am I talking about him? Oh, yes, because I bought, he curated a set with, curated, collaborated with Giro, and they did the set of 50 pastel sticks, and I was using quite a bit of those in this piece. Anyway, that was a long story about that. But um, then her hair. Okay, so... When it comes to her mane, I actually changed it quite a lot compared to the reference photograph. Now, I obviously can't show you the reference photograph because of copyright. Um, so I had to buy the, the photograph. Um, but you can always go check it out in the wildlife reference photo. But um, so I wasn't sure how I wanted to do her hair. So I actually did three little sketches before I did any uh, work on the actual pastel mat just so I could feel the flow and I could be happy and then um, I kind of knew more where I was going once I put you know my pastel pencils down to mark out the way I wanted her hair to go gosh that was a tumbly way to talk I hope uh, that made sense but um, in her hair I used um, very dark gray 13 you know dark grays mixed in with some um, yellow green earths again from unison are the very pale colors in here it's looking pretty much just like white but it, it isn't in real life there is some yellow in there some very like yeah uh, white that's tinted yellow then some stronger yellowy greens and like I said some beautiful dark grays and I've also got white in there so now I didn't like the hair so I changed it the way it was coming down um, again that's another little change that I made and using that BV10 to get in that beautiful blue violet in her shadows and then going over with Jack Richardson warm grays here's another thing I changed you see those uh, oh see now they're gone um, there were flowers sitting right, you know, obviously right in front of the camera shot. So you had these two blurred flowers and it wasn't translating well in the actual painting. So I just got rid of them. So the pastel mat lifts off really nicely. I used a kneaded eraser. But unfortunately, I forgot to film that part. I forgot to press play really annoyingly. But yeah, if you ever make a, a mistake on your pastel mat... See if you can get a kneaded eraser and just press and lift and you'll see the pigment will lift off. Not completely, but it will take quite a few layers off and then you can go back in with your pastels and make the correction. Um, so I really enjoy um, pastel mat for that. It's a brilliant paper. So taking these little flowers right over, because remember she's in that field. If you don't if you just do flowers around her, it's going to look weird. It needs to look like the horse is actually in the field. So you need to bring those flowers to the foreground, which means you need to paint them um, on top of her. And you need to paint them nice and crisp and get your um, stalks in over her. You know, it's got to look like that she's literally trotting through this field. Um, if you've enjoyed this, then you can actually see this on my Patreon there's five parts to this um, series, I suppose. Um, but I'll leave you now next few seconds. I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.